Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, I'm on the water today, getting ready to do a little combo trip. I'm gonna start out doing some ultralight fishing, just fishing for whatever I can catch and whatever I do catch that's legal to keep. I'm gonna put my bucket here to use for some catfish bait. And then later on, if I could tear myself away from this ultralight fishing, I may do some catfishing as well. But last couple of days, I've been tinkering with a little project here at the house and uh, got it all installed. So I'm gonna show you what I've been doing. So. My regular viewers, you know, I added live scope to my kayak last year and I've been through a couple different mounts. I never really found a setup that I liked. I started with kind of a portable box that I could take in and out of the kayak and use when I wanted to use the live scope and not have it here when I didn't. Then I moved it kind of a permanent mount, if you will, to my front hatch. But again, didn't really like it. The, the fish finder was up in front of me out of the way but the cords were kind of in front of me i had the live scope transducer cord going across the deck of the kayak didn't like it anyway round three <laughs> if you will i've mounted another hobie h-rail mount right in front of my front hatch so my graph both my live scope mount and my other raymarine which i like the map card better in this than the garmin both of them are in front of me, yet the cords are behind the graphs instead of having the graph up here and the cords coming forward. Plus, I've added a wire tamer for my live scope transducer that goes up under here and around my A-trail back over here. So I don't have I don't have cords going everywhere. So anyway, I've been tinkering with that project at the house and I'm wanting to get out here and try it out. So I've come back to a spot where a few days ago I got on some crappie and what do you know, this brush pile here still has a bunch of fish on it so i can spin the transducer around try to get it in range i assume those are probably crappie because that's what they were the other day but we're gonna find out i'm gonna drop a jig down in there and catch whatever we can catch and again they legal size is going in the bucket they come in with us we're gonna try to feed them to a catfish so enough of this let's get to reeling them in folks Here's the bait I'm gonna be throwing down there to them crappie or whatever they are. It's a crappie magnet, a white and chartreuse on a 1 8 ounce uh, crappie magnet jig head. I've got that on my ultralight rod. It's a St. Croix panfish series rod, six foot long. I've got a 1000 size Daiwa Regal reel with two pound test trout magnet SOS line. And I'm kind of right over the top of these, these fish here. So I'm gonna drop that jig down and I'm watching it on my screen as it falls, and I'm going to stop it about right there, right above that brush pile. And just like that, I'm hooked up, folks. Let's see what these are. Yeah, that's crappie. That's a crappie. It's still crappie on that brush pile. That's what I was hoping we would find. Mr. Crappie, you are going to be close to keeper size. Where is my measuring board? We're going to find out real quick. He may be short, actually. Oh, he's he's a quarter inch short, folks. I won't make any male genitalia jokes with that, but I could, but I won't. Let's drop another one down there and just see. Just see if we can pull another one out that's a smidge bigger. That was fast. I mean, as soon as that jig got down there, we had a fish on it, and I've got one coming after me here before I even get down there to him. Let's see, he's looking at it. Oh, I pulled it out of his face. I'm gonna take the camera here a second on this next cast before I drop it down and try to show you what I'm seeing. There my jig goes. Hopefully you can see that on the screen there. It's kind of in and out there. I just stopped it right there above that brush pile. I had one hit it, and there we come. There we go. You can see me reeling him in right there. <laughs> that's just a that's just a little fella right there. You're definitely too short, crappie. But we caught you in the act. Hopefully that showed up, y'all. I tried to tried to set my camera, just jimmy rig it here on top of my bait bucket to face that graph. But hopefully you could see that jig just falling down. I could watch it when it got on top of that brush right there where them fish are at. Turn the bell over. Stop it. That way those crappie tip to typically feed upwards so they can see it it's right there in their face and i'm not dropping that jig all the way down into the brush pile and get myself snagged up on the branches and stuff so anyway i may try to i'm gonna try to catch some more fish obviously but i may try to try to film the the graph on some just have it in my chest on some so you can see both angles of it 
Okay, folks, right here's my jig. It's going down. And again, I'm going to stop it right there. I'm sitting right above that brush pile. I've just got it in some of them's face. There are, I mean, there's fish all down in that thing. But I don't want my jig getting down into that. That's a, you get too far into that mess, you ain't getting it back. I'm just kind of sitting there. Just kind of twitching my line just a little bit. There's one. There he comes up out of it. You can see him coming all the way up. That's a little better one right there. Come on up here, crappie. The old paper mouth thing. Well, he looked a little bigger in the water. I'm not so sure now that I got him up here and laying him on the board. No, he's he's not. He's short too. Nine inches there, folks. Again, I'm gonna just I'm gonna catch me a couple more off here just to confirm what I think is small fish on this pile and then again i'm going to move on up in this creek and see if we can get some better quality ones got one we'll bring this one up kind of slow here slow as i can anyway because i'm 47 feet i moved y'all i'll sit there and fish that other brush pile and just getting small crappie here's another small one here too i don't know where the big ones have gone but they ain't where I'm at, apparently. That's another little one. Get out of here, buddy. Good. He made it back down. Hopefully, I can show you here on my screen, y'all. It's kind of... Let me move my transducer a little bit. There's a bunch of brush piles here. Here's one. There was another one over here that I was pulled that fish off of. As you can see, kind of, kind of faint there. Let me adjust my gain a little bit there's all kinds of fish on there but to this point in the day it's been small fish down there in the branch of that creek they were stacked on that brush but you know again small and here's a better look at it here you can see some fish all around this brush that's been sunk there again 47 feet but um, thus far just been small fish but i'm gonna keep plugging away at it got to be 10 inches to keep out here that's why i keep throwing these little ones back even though i'm just gonna be using them for bait you know not keeping them to eat or anything uh got to be 10 inches to be a legal size bait so we'll just keep plugging along here until we get a big one that felt like a little better thump right there we'll see when we get him up here i <laughs> just felt kabump Yeah, he's pulling a little bit. This might be a this might be a keeper right here. Yeah, that one's gonna be a keeper there. We'll throw him on the board just to confirm, but uh pretty sure that one will make the cut. What do you think, Crappie? You think you at least ten inches? He don't know what ten inches is. Yeah. He'll go about ten and a half inches, so you coming with me, buddy. Get on down in there. Alright, y'all. I had to sort through some smalls. I've had to hit a couple different spots now, but finally got a keeper. Toss back out there. That brush that I pulled that one off of is about 20 feet or so from my transducer there. Even a one eighth ounce jig head, it takes a little while to sink down to water depth is 47 feet. That brush comes up about 10, 12 feet off bottom though. That's a little better one right there. Pretty sure that's a little better one. We'll see here in a second. Yep, that's another keeper right there. Oh, paper mouth. Well, folks, I've lied to you, myself, and this fish. He's not a keeper. Nine inches there. I don't normally, normally I only lie to women, y'all, but today I've lied to you. I thought, I guess I've caught so many of these things small crappie now. I forgot what a good one feels like. <laughs> That's close. There's got to be one just an inch bigger down there on them trees, though. They've got to be. 
they've got to be one or two down there. I may just have to go a little farther on down in the in the trees to get them. All right, here's my my jig going down. I'm getting right there to the top of that mess right now. I'm just going to let it go down a little further this time. Now I'm going to let that thing sit there. Right there in their face. Got him. All oh, starting to reel it up. I saw him coming for it. That one there wanted it on the move right there, man. <laughs> I think this is going to be a little better one, but I've done lie to you. Yeah, that is a better one right there. That is a better one. This is the biggest one of the day so far. Maybe I can redeem myself for feeling like some of them smaller ones were bigger than they were. That and they're about almost 11 and a half. Just shy of it. Get down that bucket, buddy. That other one there ain't doing too good. When you bring them up from this deep, they just don't do very good. You know, my catfish, of course, they're obviously a bigger fish. Takes longer to get them up anyway. You end up taking your time with them just naturally. These crappie are so lightweight. You ain't careful. You bring them up too quick and they just don't do good. But these are going to be catfish bait anyway, so that's all right. Got him. There's another one, y'all. <laughs> I tell you, I'm having to I'm having to make numerous casts to get these. That's another short. I've just been setting it down there in their face and they are just not real active today on either of these places that I've hit now. I've got one. Oh, he thumped it. <laughs> I saw him coming for it. He spotted that jig a few feet before it even got down there to the brush. That's another keeper. That's probably that's probably between 10 and 11 inches, I'd say. There's a few keeper size fish down there. It's just getting them to bite and sorting through the smalls as this one goes crazy. Yeah, he'll keep. He's about 10 and a half, so perfect keeper size. Well, slowly but surely, I'm getting there. I'm gonna make just a few more casts for these crappie, and then I'm gonna go set up on a spot to catfish the rest of the day. I've got about another hour and a half, two hours of daylight left, and I wanna spend it doing some catfishing. Got him. Got another one here on this, y'all. I'm gonna take off after some cats after this, but I wanted to get me one more, and by gosh, I got him. Will he keep? I don't know. We'll find out. I'd say he's got a chance at it. Old crappie magnet, getting it done today. These reluctant old crappie. Let's see, oh man. Look at that right there, guys. That's a 10 inch line right there. He is just shy of it. Oh, oh shorty, you are so lucky, crappie. Try to get him to go back down now. All right, y'all. Well, this ultralight fishing's fun. Now that I got the live scope settings dialed in here, big shout out to my buddy Clint. He's helped me a lot with this live scope settings, being able to see the jig. I've been able to see my catfish baits in the past, which are, you know, more typically larger, you know, palm sized baits, big egg sinker and stuff. Been able to see those, but now I've got my settings set up thanks to Clint where I can see that, that jig, and that makes a big difference when you can drop it right in their face. Sometimes you can put it in their face, like numerous times out here this afternoon, and they just look at it and swim off or look at it and don't give a crap but 
it's been a big help of catching some extra fish and got me a few today so let's go get set up and see if we can hook a cat here before dark all right y'all first bait going down live crappie i'm gonna send two live crappie down off the back of the kayak and then I'm gonna cut that third crappie and we're gonna use a head and a chunk as cut bait off the front. And where I'm setting up at here, y'all, is right in front of where I got those other fish to start with. Again, that first brush pile that I got on is in a little branch of this creek. This creek goes all the way back in here, really big creek, but there's these little side shoots and up one there you know 20 some odd feet there's that brush pile i had them crappie on it so i've come out here kind of to the entrance of that where fish that are working up into this little side shoot that's the path they're going to have to take right now i'm setting at 33 feet here where i'm at so i'm going to suspend these baits just a couple feet off the bottom and try to intercept some cats as they either work up and down this creek or try to go in or out of this little side shoot so again We'll have a live crappie on the two back rods and cut crappie on the front. All right, there's our other crappie. Gonna send him down. That's on a Carolina rig. Got an eight ounce egg sinker down to a 10 ounce size circle hook that's in the crappie. And then I've got a catfish sumo bait stalker fly that's down there just a few inches below that crappie. So as he wiggles around, that fly is down there under him moving as well like a nice mark right there i got maybe a couple of them kind of kind of in between my baits this little mess right here is, is my front baits one of them anyway that right there is a fish I'm getting a little closer he's creeping up there on him it's got his attention we'll see what happens here Definitely some fish in the area. Just a matter of getting them to take a chomp. They invest. Oh, oh, that was a, that was a, he hit it. He hit it. Come on, buddy. He wants it now. Uh, he hit it. Now he's, now he's moving back. Maybe he'll go back there to, to my back bait. There he goes. Come on, eat that back bait back there. Eat it. He's right up there by it. Now he's swimming on. Just a tease, y'all. Come up and nipped it right there on the screen, and off he goes. Dang old fish. Oh, oh, front rod, front rod. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, he let it go. Thought I had a solid hookup, y'all. <laughs> Another jag on tease. I wasn't even paying attention to the screen. All of a sudden, the rod just went down. Hard times out here for the catfish. I should have just continued on crappie fishing, I think. I got something here, y'all. I'll show you on my screen what I just found here in just a second. I get this. Oh, that's another small crappie there. This one's about 36 feet deep. Let me get rid of him. I'll show you. Let me try to turn my transducer around here. Well, okay, there, there it is. It's coming in a little bit. About 20 feet out in front of me. So, uh, you know, I've been sitting here in front of this little branch of this creek, kind of in the old the old path that you know that flowed up in there before they flooded this mac reservoir. Been sitting there trying to catch catfish, you know, for the last hour, hour and a half or so haven't done any good you got you know some fish on the screen a couple love taps no solid hookup so i thought it's getting closer to dark i'm gonna start just trolling make my way along this ledge make my way back to the car and i had a live scope looking in front of me and i come up on that brush right there and i saw some smaller marks here on it and i thought i'd just drop a jig down in there and just see what they were and clearly it's a bunch of small crappie um so what i'm gonna do is reel my baits, reel my catfish baits up, move forward past that brush pile or else I'm gonna be snagged all up in it and then drop them back down and continue trolling back out. I don't have, 
I know it probably looks brighter on the screen than it is. I don't have a lot of time left before before sunset, so I'm going to try to make the most of it and just cover some water because clearly sitting right here waiting on fish to come to me ain't working out. Y'all, it's about time for me to take it to the house. Nobody's more excited about that than that goose over there that won't shut the heck up. He's been serenading me. He's, I think he's flying off now. It's time for me to go. Anyway, today's trip, I, you know, I tried out my new live scope mount there for the graph, and I think I like it. Of the three different options that I have tried thus far, is that goose is still going crazy, man. They ain't more, uh, they ain't a more obnoxious thing on the face of the earth than a goose that will shut the heck up. Anyway. I think with the, the live scope mounted up here on the Hobie A-Trail bar I installed, I think it's the best of the three options I've tried thus far. I like having the graphs up in front of me. I like having the wires kind of behind and out of the way. I can now access my front hatch uh, without interfering with the wires. So um, I think that's worked out. Crappie fishing was okay today. A little bit of a struggle to get them to bite, but I got those three keepers, got some more smalls. I could have probably grinded it out and got some more keeper sized crappie had I stuck with it instead of trying to, uh, to score catfish, but just catfish i went for it they let me down so uh that's how it goes but anyway y'all getting dark i'm about to reel in take it to the house we'll do it again soon see you then